Hey, Steve and Andy, happy Test Drive Tuesday. Hello. Thank you, Scott. Hello, Andy. Hey, Steve. Hello, Scott. Hi, everybody. Good crowd today. Yeah, a little extra crowd because of the test drive week. I'm certain of that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Welcome to the trade of the week. Um, let's get through some of the initial slides, of course. Financial advisors, we're not brokers. We're not uh, financial planners. We are a software uh, subscription company and a couple of traders, myself and Andy, will talk about what uh, what we see here going in the market going forward. And... Um, shouldn't be taken as, should not be taken as um, financial advice. That's what I was trying to say. All right, so we've been around, if you're not aware, Trade Ideas, we've been around uh, for about uh, 15 years. And uh, it's a very rich product. There's many different layers to it. And we try and do our best to get people up to speed as quickly as possible on this platform. And there's many different ways we do that. One of them is uh, Barry's Live Trading Room. Uh, open bell to bell every day. It's a great place to come and learn and um, see the Trade Ideas product in action. And you can ask him questions. And uh, you can also benefit from a lot of the other traders that are um, working in there as well. Uh, a few hundred people on any given day, and it's a free place to hang out. So I don't know why you wouldn't hang out. Uh, once you know it's free, you're getting a lot of good uh, value in there for sure. Um, also, we have the afternoon webinars, of course, which we're talking with you guys now. Uh, we try and highlight some of the new topics and some of the things uh, that are interesting in the afternoon webinars. This week will be a little bit more geared you know, towards uh, the test drive. Uh, question and answer will certainly be uh, available. And we have also the Friday support session. There is no webinar on, Thurs on Fridays, so uh, people are heading for the weekend on Fridays. We, uh, we have a two to sometimes longer hour or so session, uh, 11 to 2 Eastern roughly, or more like 11 to 1, uh, the way it works out. We get through a lot of questions, and after about two hours, they kind of start to die down. But nonetheless, it's also a free service or a free place to join and just come in and you know ask any kind of question you have, trading-related, scanning-related, uh, platform-related. We'll do our best to demonstrate it and um, give you guys some value there. Additionally, we have a um, what we call the Trade Ideas University and currently it's still live it may go evergreen at some point um but for now it's still there live we are there answering questions every day uh during the different segments mondays are the 101 basics and then people start to peter off towards the end of the week as they get the information they're looking for and they kind of hit the ground running but nonetheless it's a great place to at least shorten that learning curve like i said uh, because this is a very intensively rich product and sometimes especially if you're, if you're new to trading in general and you open up our product sometimes it could feel like you know an airplane cockpit so we try to do our best to simplify things and uh, see if we can do that today as well so that's it for the intro slides just a reminder um, you know the human and the machine is the uh, Human and the machine is the uh, the theme that I like to go with. Um, I stole this slide with permission, of course, from Brian Shannon. He used it in his um, uh, summit discussion when he was in San Diego talking with us uh, a couple weeks ago. But it's a reminder that uh, going forward, there is still a major discretion discretionary element. Um, to trading and uh, using the platform. The platform itself takes the place of the technology, the machine, if you will, and the human being is still the trader. And we try and show people how to simplify the machine and make some better discretionary decisions. I'm certainly gonna show you some more of that again today. All right, so with that, um, kind of an adjusted version of the uh, actual trade of the week, typical um, platform. Uh, we'll do the market recap as usual, trade, uh, trade of the week, VLO. I've got that before, Andy. We'll maybe reverse that. We'll talk about uh, some Holly AI trades today and uh, kind of keep us up to speed with what's going on in the new Holly Neo, the new Neo um, channel, which has a very simplified strategic uh, arsenal of just a couple of strategies that look for a lot of volume and good things can come when you find good volume. Um, some of you may have seen the uh, the email, you know, the one and only indicator you'll ever need. I'm going to show you what that is. Uh, it's pretty simple to use a double meaning. So, but I can't uh, let pass by, so we'll share those, set those 
And then uh, we're just going to save the remaining, you know, uh, minutes for any question and answer that some of the test drivers might have um, this week. Again, we're extending the week for two weeks as opposed to five days. All right, so let's get started. All right, that is to be saved for later. Very good. And Jackson, if you can hear me, yes, the screen is being shared. So welcome to my desktop here. What we'll do is we'll start off with the market recap, which I usually like to do, and it's very much on the heels of yesterday in Jamie's webinar as well. Um, but, you know, the key takeaways are that uh, we have been respecting this 10 period moving average very well. And uh, the first thing I noticed when I looked at the uh, charts today, you know, Andy talked back here uh, when we had this data back here, that every time the price action seemed to get near, okay, let's close that. Nike's doing something stupid. Well, let's just out of curiosity, see what's going on over there. Nothing much. What I was saying is these two little marks right here was the price action got up to prior highs and the air got kind of thin and they had to pull back and build a higher base camp and grab the Sherpas and move higher. Well, the Sherpas have moved the price action higher along the 10-period uh, moving average trail there for sure. And here we go. We've got another couple of these little wicks and maybe that the, uh, the climbers are getting a little thin air hypoxia up here again. And uh, we may be due for a pullback. I don't know. It's just an observation that we saw back here. But what we'll definitely know is if this 10 period average doesn't hold and we get a closing candle like something like that just out of the blue but tomorrow that could portend for additional settling back in and I think what I mentioned yesterday with Jamie was you know there's nothing wrong really with that scenario right there uh, again that was the prior breakout look at how we came back and tested that level two days of beautiful bottom wicking candles and then a nice push higher well let me get rid of that ink blot um, if we can't hold this 10 period moving average, we could easily pull back into this level down here and kind of retest again that pivot level. The pivot level that was once resistance that became support might become support again. You know, we'll see. There's, that's not a problem. There's no, whoops, there's no problem with that at all uh, in my book. That's a healthy, healthy pullback because we've had a nice little three week run here again following that 10 period moving average perfectly. So that's what's going on over there in the uh, S&P, uh, in the NASDAQ land. Similar, we pushed to a, to a new high today, and then uh, all-time high that would be, and then pulled right back um, into the, uh, the range here. What I was mentioning with uh, Jamie yesterday is that this sideways action is okay. I mean, that's really the more bullish of the construction of, of a pullback. You know, um, price can consolidate in two ways. It can pull back or it can consolidate sideways. And it seems to be, that's what kind of the NASDAQ was showing us at least that these last few days back here. So um, not even touching the 10 period moving average, everything is completely fanned out. Another thing I mentioned yesterday in Jamie's webinar is this is extremely significant here. This rising 200 day moving average, that's like a giant oil tanker picking a new course. And we looked at a flat 200 day moving average for a long time, uh, for a year or so. But now we have this bigger underlying picture driving the higher lows higher and uh, you know it's kind of rare that you see a moving average sloping with that much uh, vigor quite honestly um, usually they don't have that much uh, directional bias so that is a very good thing also the 10 period above the 20 above the 50 everything's lined up and so what I'm saying is there's no bear case to really be made so if you're short this market and you're waiting for your black swan you just you're probably not going to be happy um, but same thing goes over here. If the market closes back below that uh, 10 period moving average, we could see, you know, <laughs> this scatter plot graph down here. We could see some pullback into this area. And then interestingly, NASDAQ, I'm sorry, the IWM I had mentioned, did some rebalancing our portfolio uh, in my 401k, because you can do a little bit of that if you want to. This long, long range, um, it's just a matter of time, like I feel before the money managers are gonna try and make up uh, for their performance. You know, they gotta try and find separation somehow. And there certainly could be some separation in here if the small caps decide to have their day. And um, they could very well do that. Let's look at the technicals. Really nice consolidation, not a pullback in price, but a sideways consolidation. And it's certainly adhering the 10 period moving average pretty well. So I kind of expect a breakout um, if nothing bad happens and a bit bigger general backdrop, kind of expect these uh, 
small caps and mid -ca mid caps, but small caps to really catch up uh, to the market. And uh, that's really all I'm seeing at the moment. Uh, you got anything you want to add, Andy? Was no, I, I totally agree with you, Steve. Um, and, and, and before you said it, I was thinking it. I, I could definitely see us coming back on the spies and uh, testing that breakout level. Uh, give it one good test. We had a couple of dojis about four, four, three, four days after we broke out. That not dojis, but uh, bottoming tails. Uh, that Steve will point out, but yeah, a lot of times you need a retest after uh, a significant move out of that area. So yeah, I could definitely see that. And I definitely, I believe the IWM is going to have to, you would think it's going to have to get going if we, uh, if we are planning to uh, uh, continue to push higher in the other major averages, it would just stand to reason. It's, it's been have to drag it for higher. so long. Yes. I'm just reaching down with a hand and saying, come on, we got to drag you higher. If not, you really start scratching your head, and uh, I start thinking of, oh gosh, maybe the the lobbyists and and the powerful are, are so powerful that oh, <laughs> only the big companies are going to win these days. The little ones don't stand a chance. Yeah, but let's let the price action tell us that. I'll tell you what, if the price action fails, then you might be right. But I got a feeling it's going to yeah. catch up. Yep. All right, well, I'm glad you agree with me. I'm still waiting for the day where you know, I ask you and you say, I totally disagree with everything you said, Steve, but you haven't done it yet. <laughs> well, it's hard, like I said, it's hard to make a bear case of uh, this for sure. Uh, yeah. I was skeptical for so long because we had such a hard time breaking out and going. Well, we're finally getting that. Uh, well, just see if um, uh, if it's the real deal. feels mm -hmm. like it is, but uh, time will yeah. tell. We'll see. All right, why don't you talk about all the right. AI, and I'll do the all trade right. of the week after that. Let's do that. All right, guys. So, well, what I have, and we've been focusing on NEO, and that's kind of what I'm going to do today. I mean, we can go take a look at uh, 2.0 real quick or 6, uh, but but really the enthusiasm right now is with uh, NEO, and the reason it is is because uh, – we're liking what we're seeing. Okay, there's volume here, there's liquidity here, even though it can be kind of uh, some of these stocks, the early morning can be really volatile, but nonetheless, uh, uh, there's definitely liquidity when you have seven relative volume. Uh, what is this one right here? Let's see, almost 10 relative volume there. Uh, and real quickly, guys, we're going to come out with some descriptions and put them on our website along with our other strategies, but these are pretty straightforward. I mean, there's only four strategies in here. Uh, you have a, let me put cut on my little low cursor and be like Steve for a minute. So basically, here's your four strategies that we have. All right, we have a pullback long, a breakout short, a breakout long, and a pullback short. Uh, with these strategies, you kind of have to ignore the winning percentage, okay, because uh, these are kind of news plays, whether it's earnings or news, whatever the reason. So your symbolist is probably going to be different. It's, it's, not really a, a, it's, a, it's not really a symbolist. It's just, just stocks that actually meet the certain criteria when it comes to volume and relative volume and, set, and, and movement. In other words, alpha, you know, potential to have uh, movement. So for right now, yeah, you just want to disregard the winning percentage in the profit factory. These are not set up like the old uh, old version of, uh, of Holly or older versions, I should say, or what, what do you want to call these? Uh, groupings, whatever you want to call them. But anyway, let's Segments. talk about what the, I, I was, was that Steve? Segments? That segments. Thank you. Gosh, yeah. didn't come to me. Uh, thank you. All right. So let's talk about Neo today. And I, I'm really, I'm really excited. And you know, knock on wood. I hope this uh, continues. But I love what I'm seeing right now. Uh, first of all, when you're looking at my screen, the difference. I probably need to set mine on 100 to be uh, consistent with what's in the uh, 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 channel bar. Actually, I have an update uh, the, on that. Those have not been updated yet. They're, those are all still reflecting 100 shares. I confirmed that with Brad today. Okay. That'll it'll okay, change I over soon. It'll change okay. over soon. Okay, good. All right. <clears throat> well, unlike Steve, mine is reflecting 200 risk on so, um, each uh, alert that comes out comes with a stop. Okay, and 
hypothetically, if the price goes down to the stop, I do not want to lose more than $200, okay? So you can see the max, well, none of them stopped out today, but had they did stop out, I would not have lost more than $200. And so what'll happen is, is the um, brokerage plus, or the Holly plus in this case, will, will go out and, and buy this that amount of shares, okay? So in other words, uh, you can see the difference here. It's always funny, this uh, DXC only bought 74 uh, shares, and so I pulled it up, and this had a pretty big stop. I don't know if you noticed that, Steve, today, but that was like a, a three, almost a $3 stop there uh, in that DXC. So that's why uh, this number of shares was only 74 compared to like two and 300 you see in the other ones. But Mike has these built in, uh, okay, these are customized uh, proprietary stops that he, he is building into these algos. Uh, so I'm sure he has a reason for this having a, a pretty wide stop, stop there. But nonetheless, I, 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 I've been showing this a lot lately, and you can see our top three winners, guys, are pullback short, and you got a pullback long here and a pullback long. I'm really liking the way these setting up, and, and once again, I've been, uh, the last two times I've talked about uh, these uh, of Holly, I've really been uh, expressing, uh, you know, how I feel about these pullbacks. There, there's some really good setups, and, and the thing about these setups is they're going to work or they're not. And uh, you'll see in all three of these cases, um, let's take a look at this JCOM. And this was a short, and I want you to look because I'm seeing this a lot more than I'm not. These things, if they are weak, they're closing on lows. If they're strong, they're closing on highs. So you can see in JCOM here, here's what's the entry right here. You had a little bit of pain in this one, okay? But still didn't get anywhere near the stop price. Here's your daily, gap down, big relative volume was probably a lot stronger in the morning, but nonetheless, still big relative volume. And this looks like it was actually news because you can see earnings was on October 31st. Okay, so they're not all gonna be earnings. This could, could have been a downgrade, I don't know. Could have been downgrade, could have been just bad news. Regardless, it's a huge gap down and we have kind of some sideways action. Holly calls this one kind of early, was probably maybe expecting the, the, the breakdown to happened earlier it didn't went sideways for a while and then we got our break but look what happened it dips down here and then it gets to lows right there and it pops up to where you actually go negative in the trade so this is where i think guys it's over time you, i think you're going to learn to hold on to a lot of these trades not go for the small winner in other words not wait for this break take it and scalp it out for you know 40 or 50 cents not that it's a bad trade but I want you to look at this one right here, what it did, even though it kind of bounced back through the fast line, it went up here and look what happened, turned around, rolled over and went to lows, okay? That is big relative volume, continuing the price, you know, in the same direction. Even though we had a nice little bounce there, it was, what, almost two hours after the market opened, no longer than that, almost three, had our bounce. Now, I want to show you this next one. Cameron, it's almost an upside down of what we just saw in JCOM, okay? Look at this. You had a buy signal around the same time, maybe 10 minutes later, and what happened? Went sideways for just a little bit, popped up. You had some nice earnings, and look what happened. Around that same time, it starts pulling back. Algos get ahead of it. People start taking profits for whatever reason. We get that pullback down here, comes in pretty much right where the uh, buy signal was, and look what happens. By the end of the day, this thing has gone higher and closed near highs. So you would have benefited by staying in this pretty much all day. These, I don't want to tell you to, uh, you know, first of all, we can't tell you, but, you know, you can't just blindly go in there. Okay, Andy, you said it. I'm buying these and shorting these, and I'm not doing a thing until the close. Well, that's not always the case, but I think if you watch these over time, you're going to find out that if you, you know, have the staying power, I think you're going to benefit uh, and much more profitability in the long run. Let's take a look at this DCX here, see what it did. Another long. This one, not too much to pull back there at all. That was just a beautiful call, but you can see there's your setup. In all these cases, whether they're long or short, you have a move then you have a little bit of sideways action. 
okay? This pull back, you got the pull back long signal right here and boom, pop, no pain in that one at all. That was just, uh, was just a beauty there. Now, let's take a look. Since we're looking at some of the good ones, let's take a look at the bottom, uh, bottom two here, which would be uh, the ones that didn't stop out, but they pretty much they closed uh, lower than, than, or should say out of the money. Here's DPO, let me clear my screen here. And this one was a short, huge gap down, uh, $2 stock, and there's your signal and just nothing really happened there. But even if you did stay with this one, like I'm telling you to do, okay, and it bounced up, uh, you know, you had a little profit, so you missed out and you ended up losing on this one, but look what you made in comparison, okay? So overall, in moderate profit and aggressive profit, we're both the same. And let me explain to you why these are both the same, because we did not have a stop out. If you don't have a stop out in any of your stocks, the moderate is always going to be exactly as the aggressive. The only time the aggressive is different is when you have a stop out and moderate stops freezes at that level, at that stop level, aggressive will keep tallying to the end of the close. So, Steve, a good day uh, in conservative mode, uh, $300, and then uh, up day, uh, not, nothing big, but I do like the fact that, that, you know, more winners than losers, bigger winners than your losers, going back to your 10 the garden theses, cut your losses, and uh, let the winners, let the winners run. Well, like Waleed is saying in there, he's been paper trading, auto, auto paper trading the NEO entries for the last four or five days, and he's in the green and like you and I were talking this morning you know yesterday was kind of bleh, nothing to write home about but all last week was decent and today was decent mm -hmm. point is is this tool is at least pointing people in the right green direction where the green mounds are not pointing them in the direction of where the red pitfalls are so so mm -hmm. far so good it's at least giving people a good starting point and not getting people in trouble and that's exactly always oh and uh, no, I just noticed, Steve, I'm sorry, that this was actually a duplicate. You had a pullback short and a pullback. Uh, yeah, we had a duplicate today. Breakdown short and a duplicate. So that was a duplicate. Uh, so really, you know, you probably, if you if you saw it on there twice, you would probably close this one out pretty you know, quick. There's no sense in having, having it twice in there. All right, Steve, I'll send it back to you. That's about all I have today. But uh, like you, I like what I'm seeing. All right. I'll take it. Yeah, good start over there. Mm -hmm. And then like I was mentioning in the earlier webinar, you know, Holly 2.0, you understand that everybody can't sit here in front of double screens all day long. That's just not really feasible for most people. Um, so uh, we will get going. Sure, great question, Kareem, and I'll be happy to answer that before we move on. So he wants to know how do you set that risk setting in the AI? Like Andy said, that I'm using for risk trade. There was never a single stop out. So the worst it got was $76 over here. Uh, let me delete that and I'll show you, Kareem. You go to tools and options. And down here at the bottom, AI trade size, I've got to set to $100 max stop loss. And from that point, the system can triangulate everything, the stop loss and the share size and, the, and, and calculate the share size uh, for you. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Perfect. All right, so the next segment here is actually the trade of the week, the title of the webinar. And, um, you know, it triggered today. It's, uh, it's VLO. It is a, a refining stock. And, um, you know, last week we talked about uh, the virtues of trying to find stocks that have uh, maybe been down here in these levels. Let me zoom out a little bit. You know, stocks that are kind of moving sideways and getting ready to push, as opposed to maybe stocks that have already had a run and then are hitting their trend lines and the moving averages and waiting for another push. Um, the reason we talked about that last week is because we weren't really certain the last few weeks if the market was going to follow through. And so if there was no follow through, you know, these ones that are already had a move, there's a lot of, a lot of space that they can fall pretty quickly uh, versus some of the ones we've been looking at, like um, CLF, and, uh, which is still very much in play. Don't let any of that bother you. It's just a long-term patience play. Speaking of patience, X was a patience play way back here. So we've been picking a lot of um, lift type charts as well before earnings uh, was another one. What I'm leading to here is we went back to the well of something that uh, is, is looking pretty decent. 
Um, let me see what the scores are. It's got an 87, uh, we call a score. It's our proprietary fundamental technical scoring ratio. So that's a B plus student right there. And I figured it might be a good pick because I'm gonna talk a little bit more in a minute about uh, the 10 period simple moving average, which I've got on my chart right here. And uh, sometimes you pull up these charts and they just kind of immediately imprint on you. And this was one that did. So let me go back two days because we've already got two days of data in there. There it is. This is what it looked like going into the weekend. I would have loved to have seen it gapped, uh, or not gapped up, I would have loved to have seen it triggered Monday and be on its merry way because that setup was pretty darn good. Um, a nice test of the 10, a nice test of the 10. Didn't quite touch there, didn't quite touch there, but boy, it tested it there. And if you've been listening to our webinars the last few weeks, we've been talking a lot about how the counter moves start before the big move. And I've been making a few scans on that. Well, this is what the chart looked like, and this was the trade of the week call. So we're kind of going back to something that is trending up and looking for higher prices. And with that, I will say, if these don't make it, if they fail, and by fail, I mean closing below the 10 period moving average. So here's yesterday, a test of the 10 again, but no close below. Today, another test of the 10 but still no close below, but also still no move above. So you know, at some point I'm gonna get a little impatient. I, I don't like it when they drag on like that. Honestly, I would have really liked to have seen yesterday's candle just go because it was a really nice looking setup uh, going into the weekend like that right there. So, oh, I think I froze here, let's see. Yeah, my system's been freezing a little bit lately because when I broadcast, I think there's just something going on there that's uh, a conflict. All right, so we're back to VLO and it's in play. It triggered today. Um, we got kind of a head start trigger, not all time highs, but a bit of a head start to get a little bit of uh, work under our belt. But what we don't wanna see here and every day that goes by, it becomes more and more imperative to not even really wanna let this thing trade much below that 10 period movement average. So, um, you know, I'm gonna give this one a little bit more, a uh, little bit more hope, but if we get a close below that 10 period, I think you might want to cut this one early because once they kind of peter over and show that close, the next day can be in a, kind of ugly. We don't want to be in that. So again, I would have really liked to have seen the move occur um, a little earlier, but uh, it didn't. So we got to work with what we got. That was what we looked like going into the weekend. And that's what we have now, a little bit of indecision. So uh, speaking of indecision last week, which was also one we forgot to talk about, Nike was a, a pullback buy off of the, uh, basically right there was our green line. That was our trade of the week a few weeks ago and we can see it still has done nothing. And if you recall last week, we discussed that, um, let's go back a few candles, let's do this. One, two, yeah, we went here and I said, you know what? After these candles, I'm just not liking this thing. Uh, I'm, I'm a little nervous about it. And actually it wasn't that day, that was the next day. It was, it was, uh, bear with me here. There, it was that day right there. I said we were painting ourselves into a corner. 10 period moving average was coming down. This thing might resolve itself either way and I'm not gonna give it a whole lot of leeway to the bottom. And it's been five days since then. A little testing candle there, bounced right back up, but no follow through. Had an opportunity today to trade higher. I think some of that's what a bad a tip. But a complete reversal again. This thing is it's just dead in the water. I, I wouldn't wanna be in this quite honestly. I just think, and I, and I said last week, you know, cut it if you don't like it, I cut mine and I'm not no longer in it, but that's that's a messy chart right there. I, I would pass that up every single time doing homework, looking at charts. Matter of fact, it almost looks like a short that Wick is, is, is genuine. Mm -hmm. um, but back to, uh, you know, funny, also Brian Lund was tweeting a stock, a PSX, which was another uh, refiner, and it looked like that going into the weekend. So we had a really nice look on PSX and a really nice look in VLO going into the weekend, but we've kind of chopped around and bled a little bit. So the luster is kind of coming off my excitement about this trade of the week, I'll be honest with you. So I don't want to give it too much more uh, stubbornness to the downside. In my opinion, um, things like these really probably should have should have gone. And, and, and that's great. Wally had adjusted his trade of the week and you're welcome to do so too. Um, his 102 price didn't trigger, I think, or maybe he did, let me see, well, VLO, he got an earlier price perhaps. Nope, it didn't trigger. Nope, he's not triggered. He, see, well, while it is just going to roll time highs, I was thinking we get a little bit of a head start and it wicked through and pulled right back, but it's still intact. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to throw it out the window. I'm just saying I'm throwing a little caution flags up here. All right, so let's uh, move on. Um, the email that you guys got said if there's only one indicator that you need, uh, you should have, or how, however it was phrased, the one and only indicator you'll ever need. 
And, um, you know, I've, I've converted a few people. I converted Jamie. Sean's been paying attention. Andy was always right there. With, we discovered it together. We call it the fast line. It's the 10 period simple moving average. And it's the only thing you see on my 15 minute charts. And see, uh, it's one of the few that you see on my um, daily charts. One of the reasons it's on my 15 minute charts, I don't have to look very much farther than Holly today, DXC uh, followed the 10 period all the way up. So what this does is this 10 period moving average is a guide to momentum. As long as the candles close and stay above the price, the ability to move higher still exists. But once they post a close under that moving average on the intraday, you know, the momentum is probably stalled. So either way, it gives you a decision point to decide what to do once you're in the trade. Is momentum going to continue or is momentum going to stall? And either one of those two decision points uh, can certainly help you. Uh, Waleed has replaced his 8 EMA. Oh, Waleed, do I have something for you? I'm so glad you replaced the 13 EMA, or I'm sorry, 13 SMA. 13 SMA, because um, I got an example, and it's a great dovetail. I, I, I got Jamie involved, I got Sean involved, and I think I got Barry involved. You know, there was a conversation going on Slack over the weekend about uh, moving averages, and Barry said, well, why don't you use the 13 EMA? And I basically said, well, why do you use it? And so I said, there's no point in just typing this out. This is ridiculous. It's all about visuals. So I just quickly looked on the weekend. I said, all right, I took off all my indicators and I left on the 10 period S and I added a 13 EMA. For whatever reason, some people thought that the 13 EMA was the new magic bullet, you know, 15 years ago or whatever. But I'm going to give you some uh, visuals here. Does the Price action seem to care about this 13 EMA down here? No, it seems to care a lot more about what the 10 period is doing uh, in that example, which is a good one. Another example um, actually was the trade of the week. And I snapped this going into the weekend. There's the 13 EMA. So I showed Barry both of these overlays and he said, all right, I'm sold. <laughs> so um, you can talk till you're blue in the face about it, but, but until you see, it's just been my opinion and Andy's opinion that the price action out there which is really, you know, quantitative uh, algorithms seem to want to use the 10 period moving average as a waypoint or a target. And what I'm saying is uh, it's such a very simple indicator. Like this week, we can look at CRISPR and even CRISPR put another couple of days in there. There's another day and then poof, said, screw it. We, we can't go down. Mm -hmm. We just got to keep lifting. So if you're in this thing each day, you're asking yourself, Jeez, do I get out? Do I get out? Did it close below the 10 period? Then don't get out. And there you go. You know, we talk about trying to let the good ones run and it's extremely hard to let the good ones run. But what I'm trying to do is show you a couple of ways to help you stay seated and sit on your hands and don't hit the sell button and let these things run or contra controversially, if they uh, close below that 10 period moving average, then yeah, get your hand out and hit the sell button. The momentum has subsided and that works. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just going to say, keep in mind too, that it's a momentum line. Okay. So it's going to work. It's going to be more effective during momentum versus consolidation. Yes. It could yes it's not a consolidation. Down. No, no. It's, it's, it's to gauge the momentum. Is the momentum still intact as the price closed below the 10 period moving average on an intraday 15 minute or on a daily? No, then momentum is still intact. See, we can write our own mm -hmm. algorithms just like that logic right there. Yep. So as I was going through some scans today, of course I found some examples. Let's play around. IPHI, I think the 10 period, exam, uh, 10 period moving average is coming into play here where the algorithms or the, uh, they, they decided that the buy point is probably time to get back. This, this line is getting pretty close after this congestion. This is the kind of setup I just love all for all day long. You have the gap up, you can't pull back in price. You have sideways, sideways. The thing that kicks everything into action is the 10 period moving average. Um, the nine EMA for pullbacks. Now I'm just, I'm, I'm going to keep it simple. Just like the name says the simple moving average. I'm just always using that. I'm not going to switch around to, to other lines. I just want one clean, simple line life on the fast line. Exactly. Well, so there's a good example on the daily uh, series it, series, an example of one that is so strong. It is repelled by even the thought of touching the 10 period. So when you see those, it didn't even touch the 10, so I've been interested in that yet. So that's even stronger than strong right there. LIT is another example on my, my notes here. Came back, look at that. Tag that 10 period. Actually, there's a little space in there, but darn, pretty, pretty much close enough. Scared the price higher on that one. Um, THO, uh, this is an, actually, this is going to be one of our stocks that we're going to mark up. 
all these days adhering to the 10, just like going to work on the 10 period moving average line. Um, and then uh, just for fun, I already showed you this one, DXC, how it also works on the intraday, right? If you're in an intraday trade and you got in here and it pulled back, but you're like, oh man, I really want to hold on to this thing. It didn't close below, it didn't close below. It tried, but it didn't. There's no need to get out. And so it can work in both of those time frames. And again, like Andy said, just keep it as simple as possible. It's a, moment, a momentum gauge. Is momentum still in play or is momentum subsiding? XLV, I was looking at the sectors. That one also had an interesting, it's been writing the 10 period for a while on the healthcare ETF. So mm -hmm. ETFs, ETFs can do it, stocks can do it. Anything that has price action and traders and algorithms trying to figure out price action, I think that 10 period moving average is really the one other thing that you need. Of course, I use a 20 and a 50 and a 200 on my daily, but all that does is just, you know, remind me they're all fanned out perfectly here. This is a pretty good little setup there. So question, uh, if you had to use one indicator to give confirmation to the 10 period simple, what would you use? One indicator to give confirmation, volume. I would use volume and that's, that's it. Relative volume and the 10 period moving average. Where there's volume, there's momentum. Lack of volume, you're going to start to see uh, shenanigans and stupid algorithm shuffles. So that is the one indicator that you really need. It's the one and only indicator I've ever used, and I don't want to mess around with 13 EMAs as we see. They're not exactly what they're you know, talked up to be uh, in reality. So there you have it. It's our favorite one. We call it the fast line sometimes, but um, you know, w once you just try to keep it simple, it makes things a lot easier. All right, so I've got a couple of swing trades to show people how you can set a swing trade in a price alert and how to share those as a cloud entry. We do that sometimes. I've got four or five entries that look interesting. Um, so I'll do that now. And then if there's anybody in here who's sitting on a question there in the test drive and you'd like some assistance on something or you're itching to ask something, we'll be doing that in a few minutes here. So just hang tight. So what we'll do is we'll take the price alerts. We will get rid of all the currents delete from the surge side and um, I'm going to start with the AI today AI uh, CLDX where actually where was that oh who was CLD where did I see a CLDX maybe it was in one of the other Harleys it might be because that's what it is it, it's, it's got a buy tag in there that's what it was mm -hmm. CLDX nope that's not it hmm. um, CDLX CDL I gets dyslexic all the time yeah, I think that's the one. Let's see. Oh, we got a bad tick in there. What's going on here? That's really crazy. Well, forget the intraday chart. Um, I just noticed it was one of the uh, oh, earnings. Was it earnings? Today. Okay, forget that one. That's what it is. There we go. <laughs> Silly. Friggin' price is trading up here, which is just a reminder that um, you're really, really rolling the dice if you're going to you trade into earnings. If you're short on that, you're you're hurting. But if you're long, you're happy. But trust me, you don't want to be doing that and getting beginner's luck because you'll start going back to that well, and pretty soon it's gonna it's gonna hurt you. The frustrating part is, is a lot of times the big moves in stocks, um, you know, you got to sit through earnings to participate if you're a long-term investor, and that's just the way it is. But yes, it was my intention to look at these, and this is a new red box we have, guys, in the new version to remind people, hey, earnings are today or tomorrow, pretty close. Pay attention. So forget. CDLX. I'll have four for you. Uh, let's take a look. We're going to do uh, where's my notes? Ah, AL. AL, I believe. Let's take a look at the pattern. Where did I find AL? I know I found it. I found it off of yesterday's scam, but I like what it's doing here. Uh, it's pulling back. It's adhering to that beautiful 10 period moving average. So no bad earnings coming up. Earnings are behind us. I'm just going to put an alert right about there above today's high. Perfect. Um, THO, I mentioned that earlier. We saw that uh, 
think, I can't remember where I saw this one either. I need to write down which, which scan I saw. I was just going through a lot of my scans. But this looks kind of like our VLO, um, although it hasn't really gotten far below that uh, 10 period. Kind of looks like a bull flag. Hmm. Yeah, it's, I, I, found it on that one. I think I got it off of that one, yeah. So we'll just grab the high here of uh, 56, and we'll call it 56. We'll even call it in the notes where we found it, the bull flag type of setup. All right, two more. Um, moss, no moss, more moss. <laughs> so this one, again, a beautiful trend. It's the 10 period there, the 10 period yesterday, closed above it yesterday and was below it this morning. But look at that, found a miraculous way to pull a stick save out of it all. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm just, we're just gonna look for follow through today. That's all we're gonna do is look for follow through. All right, and then the last one was uh, what, BKCC. I like the way this one, look at how this one battled mm -hmm. its 50 period. And then it looks like it won the battle. It uh, made a nice close above that uh, that level today. Low volume, uh, let's see, the average daily volume is not that great. So I'm gonna mark that up in the notes too. It could be interesting. Lower-ish volume. Be aware. So those notes can come in handy sometimes just to remind of things that we're seeing currently that we might want to remind our future self in the moment of panic as you're trying to execute this. So just a couple of quick ideas. Um, you know, again, looking at the bigger picture, like we talked about in the beginning here, the S&Ps, uh, the S&Ps are going to be uh, possibly, you know, a little tired. We'll see. But we're going to right click that. We're going to share these four, excuse me, these four selected. And uh, I'm going to drop these into the chat window. Now I'm going to call it four price alerts. And I think I got them there, right? Great. So if you want to accept those, you can accept those and add those to your price alerts. Um, and you're welcome, Waleed. And uh, you might want to show uh, Lee how to uh, do the uh, uh, indicators on the chart there, the okay. SMAs. There's, there's, there's two things going on. The first thing is an indicator. So, um, the, and the second one is modify. I've kind of, it's kind of weird. So. If I go to modify, those are going to be the ones I've currently got drawn. So if you want to build a new one, you got to go to indicator and you got to, you got to say right here, SMA. You just click that new indicator, SMA, and then it'll pop up right here. You give it a name, whatever you want to do. You, you can type your, your periods in there. You know, you're going to say it's a 10 period. You do it like that, but you're not done. You've, you've got to click, uh, okay. And then you've got to come in and do one more step. It looks like it's that purple line. You come in here and you do modify indicator parameters. And this is where you find this window. And what's the one that we just did there? It looks like, yeah, see, we called, two tens, yeah. Look, see, 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 we called it a 10. So we, that's, that's the label it's showing up now, but it's actually a 20. Let's change it to a 10 and then we could modify the color and make it uh, something different. So, Literally, that's what you want to do. The, the, the answer to this, I'm going to remove this indicator. The answer to this is you want to start by going right click, indicator, simple moving average. And then once you've given it a title and all that, you go to this one and you find it and you modify the parameters. And that's where you would actually type in the period of 10. Just locate it in these little areas. And that's how you would do that. All right. So test drivers, do you have any other questions? I mean, we spent a lot of time this morning in our uh, support webinar. I see some familiar names. And uh, let's see, Jeff has a question. APDN. Okay, yes, this one. Uh, okay, so he's saying, how would you evaluate this trade for a swing long? I probably wouldn't. APDN has just been in a horrible downtrend. Um, you know, I don't know much about the company. DNA sciences, okay, they're they're betting on product probably. Now that's on the, the bad side. Okay. Coming into today, it just looked like absolute garbage. If there's a story there and you're behind the story, that's okay. You can follow it. Now, Andy has said a lot of times when you see a giant green candle like this, you know, there's gonna be some follow-through. It's just a matter of 
how much and what, but you know, what I would probably first judge this thing on looks like this 200 day moving average, maybe kind of got a hold of it. Um, you know, if it can gravitate around here a little while in sideways action, it could go longer, but you know, I'm not one to try and play DNA stocks and downtrends. However, that's a very interesting candle today. I know some people were day trading it and uh, trying to short it and they got uh, whacked as well. So maybe there's a story there. I'm not familiar with it. There might be some decent follow through, but I would say this, how's the stock gonna look 10 days from now? If it's still up here in the $20 range and it's moving sideways, then it might be something to consider. Maybe that is a game changing um, deal, but boy, the trend is sure ugly in that one. You got any thoughts on that? Uh, well, you're rolling the dice anytime it comes to, you know, biotech stocks and, but, um, you know, huge well, move today. You can't argue with that on huge volume. Yeah. And Jeff nailed it. Uh, yeah. The, the, the float. I'm not much yeah. into stocks that trade 750,000 shares in the entire float. Yeah. Uh, no, thanks. Really. Here it is right there. I should have just circled it. That's why a single stock window is kind of important to have. What's the average daily volume? You know, when are the earnings coming up? What's the what's the, what's the relative volume today? What's the five minute uh, candle doing? I've got it up there higher float. That's ridiculous. Can I look at UI also? Let's see UI. All right, so a little follow through here, and now it's starting to peter out. The people who made their money, or short term people who bought it back here, are starting to take profits. Uh, computer peripherals. This is a much different chart. <laughs> There's a lot more going on over here. Uh, we go to weekly. Okay, so it's a new issue and it's kicking ass. Interesting. Uh, oops, time frame. We'll go back to daily. So a lot of space. Uh, I mean, if, you, if you've been participating, wonderful, but there's so much space between the current price and the momentum line of the 10 period moving average. I would be afraid to initiate anything up in here, quite honestly. Okay, can you, okay, one more time, Lee, right click, indicators, you start here, you would just select SMA, and then just give it a title, you just call it 10 SMA, and then click okay, that's step one. Step two is modify that indicator that you just built. So it'll be at the bottom of mine down here. This would be the one right here. I can change that right there to make it 10. And then once you launch that, it'll be a 10 period simple moving average. Just play around with that, those those two. Yep. All right, anybody else in the test drive? We're approaching the top of the hour. Anybody have uh, any more questions? We're gonna be available again tomorrow in the live session, uh, noon Eastern. We're gonna have an afternoon webinar tomorrow, an afternoon webinar Thursday. And that's it. All right. Thank you for that, uh, friend. All right. So I think uh, we're going to bring in Scott. He's got a couple more announcements. And uh, I thank you all for your participation. Hello, Scott. Yeah, thank you. We've got that test drive going on. A lot of you are participating in. If you're not in it and want to, sign up. Uh, well, you can still get the most out of it. It ends on the 22nd, so sign up today, and you get still most of this week and all next week. It's just $8.99 for the duration at tradeideas.com slash test drive. Uh, go ahead and get it if you're not in it. Um, we've got ebooks. Uh, Steve and uh, Andy contributed chapters to these, so check them out, trade-ideas.com slash setup. Three books, two chapters each. They have cloud links to add to your layout, and it's good stuff. Just Put your email in on that page, get the download. Uh, podcasts that we put out just about weekly. Uh, you can subscribe to it by searching for Trade Ideas Podcast wherever you listen to yours and add us as a subscription. That way you can also look through the back issues and find those interviews we've done as, in addition to getting the next one that comes out as it's released. Uh, there's a code if you're ready to hop onto a premium subscription or get, pick up a paid subscription today, just go to uh, the pricing page and purchase using Trade Turkey. If you're uh, standard and want to upgrade using this code, say 15% off an upgrade, uh, just uh, go to the home page, click on login in the upper right, and choose update your account or change subscription. Use that code. Uh, any questions, email us info at trade-ideas.com. 
You can uh, follow Steve on Twitter at Today Trader, also at Trade Ideas and at Gauntbot and some others. Uh, Facebook.com slash Trade Ideas Pro is the Facebook page to like and share. And any questions, email info at trade ideas.com. Thanks, everyone. We'll have the recording up later on. Stay tuned. Thanks, Steve. All right. Thanks.